I do not miss wearing this. If it wasn't for Tony, Tony, oh. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I have a very different type of video, but it's a video that's long overdue, and it, I always wanted to talk about this, but it just didn't feel like the right time. But now, it feels like the right time. So, I want to talk about my experience working at The Gap. Yes, The Gap. The Gap was also another job I had while I was in college. And I want to talk about working at The Gap from the process of me getting hired, you know, managers, coworkers, customers, you know, the whole experience, my whole experience working at The Gap. Y'all already know, if you didn't check it out, I worked at Old Navy as my first job. I'm going to put it right here. The Gap ended up becoming my second job after I applied online and I applied to the Gap that was by my school, my college at the time. So it was like a win-win. If I got this job, it was going to be convenient. I could go to school, go to work, and it would go hand in hand, right? I can go to school and if I had to go to work, I didn't have to travel far. I could just walk. That's how close the Gap was to my college. I could walk there. So it would have been real convenient. And remember, Gap and Old Navy are sister stores. So I said, this is if they don't hire me, then there's some dummies. Because I'm like, so you know, I got to go down memory lane. It was holiday season I applied. So you know, like late December. I applied. I got in for the interview. I met with one of the managers and we was talking. And I remember we had our little interview in one of the fitting rooms. You know, they had a nice big fitting room. We had an interview in there. And it was me, another guy, and another girl. And we was talking and a lot. He asked for the resumes and he we was explaining our experiences. I gave him my resume and then he saw that I worked at Old Navy. He was like, oh, whoa, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, oh, you already been with the company. You already know what it is. I'm like, yeah. I just know that the gap is like a more professional version of Old Navy and like Banana Republic is the most professional version. If you know, you know, right? So basically, and at that moment, I knew I got hired, but they still have to tell you, oh, we're going to call you, blah, blah, blah. I already knew I got hired. So fast forward, a week later, they emailed me talking about, oh, congratulations, you got hired, da, da, da. Come in this day at 6 a.m. for your first training, like a registered training, my first shift. So we had to come in. The store opened at 8. We had to come in at 6 to do register training and all that. Now, mind you, if you didn't watch my old Navy video, I told y'all how they always had me doing mobile. The mobile devices with the credit debit and the machines always messed up and they always, and the machines and how they always malfunction and everything, right? I never learned how to use the register. They all have the same registers because they're all sister stores. I never learned how to use the register. I remember I was with a guy and a girl, another guy and another girl, right? The guy had already worked at another gap. He was just transferring. The girl had worked at Banana Republic. So they knew how to use the registers. I didn't. And I remember the girl that was our trainer, she was she was all right, but I, I got a story about her later. <laughs> and I remember she came downstairs, unlocked the door. She was like, all right, you guys can wait in the stock room. No. She was like, all right, you guys can wait in the employee room, you know, where we have lunch and the lockers are. So we like, all right. She opens the, we go upstairs, she opens the door to the employee room, and that shit is mad small. Like, this, you see my living room? It was like one fourth of my living room. We walked in, and I'm thinking it's gonna be like a nice, cause my old Navy break room was a nice size, right? I'm thinking it's like, all right. We walk in the room, I'm like, damn, this is it? Like, me me and the other two, we just looking at each other like, damn. Okay, mm, let's see how this is going to be. So she finally comes to get us and she takes us to do register training. And then they tell her, oh, how they already worked, whatever, whatever. So then she almost tries to like rush through it. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I'm like, yeah, they might have experience with the register, but I don't. So don't just rush through it like, oh, yeah, just press this, press that. Da, da. No, 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 no. Tell me everything I need to know. Because 6 a.m. to 8, right? They want us to do two hours of register training. But then at 8 o'clock, we were supposed to be on registers for our whole shift until maybe like, I say maybe 10 or 12, something like that. So I'm like, you're not just going to rush through this because they know it and I don't. 
and I got to open the store and all this and use register for the first time. And I don't know how to do it because you want to rush through it. Like, relax. It's 6 a.m. Nobody's really here. Just take your time. Tell me everything. So eventually she told me the steps, blah, 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 blah. So fast forward to we open, da, da, da. Everything's cool. My first few days were cool. You know, I got shown around the floor. It was a much better experience than Old Navy, I must say. I got showed around the floor, the stock room. I learned about different things, the fitting room, all the different. It was, you could tell the Gap is a much more professional store than Old Navy. The way they have their signs and the signage and the stickers and the, the way the clothes are formatted and folded and everything. You could tell it's a much more professional setup. Then I had my first experience with like a stupid customer. Not a stupid customer, but he got on my nerves because it was one of like my first days. And with the Gap cards, you know, the Gap credit cards, there was some type of special deal going on. 10% Tuesdays, right? They never explained nothing to Tim. They never explained this to me or nothing. So basically, the guy, he waited until the receipt was coming out the box to be like, did I get my 10% off today? Now, if you know it's 10% Tuesdays, shouldn't that be one of the first things you come up to me and ask? While I'm taking the hangers off and the sensors, you're going to wait till the receipt is coming out. Did I get my 10%? So then I'm like, I'm stuck. And then here come the manager. Now you want to come out of nowhere. Oh, yeah, it's 10% off. Oh, don't worry. Just return everything back. Let him rebuy it and then apply it. I'm like, you going to show me how to do it? You know what I'm saying? Like, you realize this is my third day, right? Let me tell you, the area I worked in was like middle class, right? So basically, I'm telling you, across the street from my gap was like a Bloomingdale's. And if you know, Bloomingdale's is a fancier version of Macy's. Blocks away from my store was, was like Louis Vuitton, Fendi, Prada, Gucci, all those type of stores. So just imagine the neighborhood, right? So you would think that these people, you don't got no problem spending thousands of dollars in Louis Vuitton or Bloomingdale's, but you want to come to the gap and fight with me over prices? Come on now. Compared to Old Navy, my managers was not that bad, to be honest. I can't say I had a run-in, I had like a bad experience with really none of them except for one. And it was over a Gap credit card. And this is the thing, they valued them Gap credit cards. The whole Gap Inc., everything is about the store credit cards. And that's so, that was the most annoying part about working there. You got to deal with the register. Then... You want to register, right? Then you got to answer the phone. Then you got customers in line complaining. Then you already dealing with a customer complaining that you're ringing up right now. Then you got the manager in your ear because we had to wear walkies telling you this and that. You got to wear walkies your whole shift. So you just got so much going on. And then it's like, oh, how many how many gap cards, gap cards, gap cards? Then if you don't get gap cards, they get mad. They want to bribe you. It, was to a, it came to a point where they was like, oh, whoever gets the most gap cards, whoever gets two gap cards, I'm gonna give y'all a Starbucks gift card. Like, no matter what incentives y'all throw at us, if these don't wanna get a gap card, they're not gonna get one. People are not stupid. It's not five, 10 years ago where it was just like, a, oh, okay, blindly signing up for something. You asking people to put in their social, put in their annual income, all this, just to save 60%. Now, that sounds like a good deal, but these people, mind you, like I said, this is the area. Bloomingdale's is right across the street. Louis Vuitton is two blocks away. They know the ins and outs of all this stuff. Like, it's not going to be that easy. It's like, it was to a point where it's like they wanted you to steal their identity to get a gap card. Like, if you stole their identity to get one, all right, do what you have to do. Like, that's the attitude they have. Like, nobody wants a gap card. Like, leave us alone with it. Like, it was to the point where they had like a list in the back of like the top performers and all that stuff. And it was just like they always bribed you and held it over your head like, oh, who got the most gap cards today? You didn't get no gap cards today? Oh, it's been three hours. You didn't get it? It's just like, if I'm telling you, if I'm telling them you can save 80% if you open a gap card and they're like, eh, that's right. your pur the purchase is $300 something dollars. I'm telling you, you can save 80% by opening a gap card and you don't want one. Like, y'all got to find better incentives. Y'all got to find better incentives for us to sell this because it's like, Come on now. People not messing up their credit over a one-time purchase. It was a new manager had just started, I remember. And we was all in the group. Um, we was all in the group, you know, doing our little 
like the the meeting. Like it's like every shift, every shift group, they have like a little circle meeting about oh the store sales, the daily goals, what's the new sales of the day, blah blah blah, whatever, right? So the girl, it was me and like four other people. We was she was telling us oh today is this and that. Da, da, da. I mean, make sure you're selling the gap cards. And uh, here come this new manager. First of all, he didn't even introduce himself. You know, I'm not going to say no names, but he didn't introduce himself. When I tell you out of nowhere, this man, he just looks directly at me. How many gap cards are you going to get today? And I'm looking, I'm like, mm, I'm going to try to get two. There should be no try. It should be a promise. And I looked at him, I was like... And then the other four people was looking at me and looking at him. Then the other manager, the lady, she was just looking like it was an awkward silence for like five seconds. And then he just made some type of face. And we was all like, so I'm telling you, for the next two weeks, I ain't really messed with him. And he can feel my energy. Because I'm one of those people where like, I'm like one of the easiest people to get along with. So if you have a problem, nine times out of ten is you. Because I don't give up that type of energy where... I'm the type to have a problem with, but I, you know I can solve the problems. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, let's not get it twisted. I'm not the type to be disruptive and combative and you know argumentative, but I could take it there if I have to. But this is a job setting. It's not that serious to me. I come here to get my money, do my shift, and leave. Another time that's that's really stuck out to me was remember the girl I told you about in the beginning that was training me for the register she had left she was good at getting the gap cards or whatever so she had a cord in the hood she had so many stores in the area trying to recruit her for their store and we had an H&M across the street and I guess she quit gap and went to H&M because they offered her more money or whatever so she had left the store everybody had knew she had left but then one day I'm in the men's section and I'm helping a customer right but I also had another co-worker helping him the other co-worker had went to go get him whatever from the back at sides. One of my managers and her, the girl that was training me that left for H&M, she's, she don't work there no more, remember? She's talking to her, like reminiscing like, oh, they talking because you know, they catching up. She's telling her about H&M and how it is over there. And I guess they see me walk by the customer that I had already helped and that the other guy had already went to go find a size for. And I guess they thought that I was just walking by the customer, not customer servicing. So the so the girl that didn't work there anymore, don't you know she had the nerve to yell out, Tony, go customer service that man right there. Yeah, make sure you're customer servicing. I'm looking at her like, you don't even work here no more. Who the f are you to tell me to go customer service somebody? You don't even work here no more. And then the other manager next to her is just standing there like, like I guess in their heads, like they just thought I was just walking by customers, not customer service, and I'm like. Bitch, how dare you? You don't even work here no more. You trying to tell me what to do? Bitch, go, go back to H&M and go play over there because you don't want this over here. Trust me. Trust me. Who are you talking to? You don't work here no more. You're, you have as much authority as a customer because who are you to be telling me what to do? And you work at H&M. You don't work here no more. Did you forget that? Did you, for, did you forget that? Because I can remind you. And then I told them, I was like, such and such is already helping them. And I went about my business and they look real stupid. This is just my gap, my location, my experience. I did experience, I did witness some prejudice with some of the customers. And when I say that, I'm gonna lay it out like this. There was a time when it was two black guys that came to the store, right? And they had on do-rags, they was kind of sagging, they had on white beaters, and they were just, you know, they came in there, it was two of them. And I remind you what I said about the kind of area the Gap store was in. So they went in there, they went up to the men's section, and all of a sudden, one of my managers get on the walkie like, Tony, go over and go in the men's section. Make sure you customer service those two guys. Make sure you customer service them. Ask them what they need. Ask them what, blah, blah. And I'm looking at them like, it immediately clicked to me. And I said, damn, they, they, they on some other today. All right. Now mind you, they wanted me to customer service them so bad the two guys got their stuff. They got some pair of jeans. They went on the line, paid, and left. But to me, that was like a real snap of the fingers. Like, I had an epiphany. I'm like, damn. So two black guys come in here with a do-rag, and they kind of sagging a little bit. 
and you think they're going to come in and steal. But they feel real stupid when they just got their jeans, waited online, paid for it, and left. Now, mind you, the irony is about a few weeks later, there was this middle-aged white man that came into the store. You know, they, he, he looks normal. He don't look like a threat. He don't look like he's going to steal because he's a middle-aged white man. I remember he had on a tracksuit. I was in the front. And for some reason, they never listen to us. They always put like the newest jean collections in the front of the store. As soon as you walk in, they land right on the table. He came in, acting like he was looking at them, hmm, hmm. And then he just tried to snatch all of them and run out. And then the LP girl, Lost Prevention, which is like another way of saying security, she went running after him and she came back in the store like, like she had a whole bunch of jeans. Like, I guess she scared them, so he dropped them in the street and she came back and got them. I'm like, Hmm. Now, isn't that funny? The two black guys that had a do rags and white beaters and sagging jeans, y'all thought they were such a threat. Y'all wanted me to run after them, basically, in the men's section because you thought they was going to steal. But the middle aged white man that nobody was paying attention to was actually the one that stole. So, that's just a that's just a reality check for a lot of the. And, you know, if any of y'all experienced that working there or shopping there or at, in any retail store, leave it down below because that was a really interesting moment working there, comparing the two. And okay, now on to my coworkers. My coworkers, I can say I didn't have no problem with none of them. It's one of those things where, like I always say, some coworkers you always mesh, you immediately mesh with, right? Y'all cool with each other every time you see each other. It's jokes. Y'all laughing. Whatever it is, is whatever it is. Y'all always have a fun time, especially when you're behind a register or y'all closing together. Y'all be talking about all type of stuff, laughing, making jokes, you know, talking about the customers or talking about a crazy transaction you had, and it is what it is. Some people are some, sometimes, like, sometimes they want to talk to you, sometimes they don't, and it's like kind of like an awkward thing between y'all. Like, Monday, they talking to you. You see them on Thursday, they act like they don't want to talk and you're just like, okay, whatever. Then there's some people where you just never really talk to like that. You see them, they see you, you might have a shift with them, you might be in the same section as them, but you never really mesh with them like that, talk with them like that. Because I remember there was always this one guy, he was like, he was like a, I guess like the party type. I'm not the type to go out to clubs and party and this was at the time where people, a lot of them, and then... If we was around the same age, a lot of them like to go out and do hookah and go to the clubs and all that. I wasn't that type. He always liked to invite people around the job, other coworkers, to like these parties, even if they was new, even if he didn't know them. But he like he never invited me. And in my head, I was just like, hmm, I always thought about that. And I was just like, you know, it didn't affect me because if I was invited, I wasn't going to go anyway. Because like I said, it never fazed me. But it was just funny to me how some of them operated. Like, you you asking all these other people, but I guess like to me, to them, I wasn't like that party type or the type that they could see like drinking and all that stuff. So they never really asked me out. To the, the, but to me, like I said, I don't come to work to make friends. No, if you do, that's great. That's a extra boost. That's an extra, you know, that's an extra benefit of working retail. You get to make friends. You get to meet cool people. You get to exchange social medias and, you know, gain associates outside of work. But to me, it's just like, whatever, it is what it is. Now, the register, I became a pro at the register. It's many different things that you learned, way more than I did at Old Navy, from the fitting room to like folding and sizing, how to make sure everything, and we had wooden hangers. So it was just like, everything was very, you know, upper scale or more upscale than Old Navy. They saw that my strong suit was a register because I was very fast, I was very efficient, and I became one of those people that was in the top percentage of people that could get people to sign up for gap cards. So every shift, I always stayed on a register to the point where they gave me like manager duties on a register. Like, how can I say this? Not manager duties. To the point where they gave me like managerial powers on a register. Like, all employees start off at level one. If they, if a manager sees you so good at the register, they give you level two on the register. Basically, where it's like, 
you know how sometimes a customer is difficult or something happens where you got to override this or do this or change this, change that, and you need the manager's permission? If you make it to level two, you already have that permission. You don't got to ask, oh, can I can I have a manager? Blah, 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 blah. I need help on the register. I need to override. No, you already have that power. As soon as you log in, you are level two. You can do anything on the register. So that's the point I made it at. And like I said, I was good at the register. I say great at the register. I was great at the register. One of the top people there that was at the register. One of the top register people there. And it was just certain times when, like I said, we in a we in this, you know, nice to do neighborhood, but they was in there cheap. You coming in here with a fur coat trying to argue with me about a twenty dollar jacket? Come on. You coming in here with a fur coat trying to argue with me about a return that you don't have the receipt for. I remember I had this one lady. This one lady, she argued with me. We, we holding up. The line was a nice amount of people. It got to the point where the line started wrapping around the staircase. Because we had a staircase on the first floor. It started wrapping around the staircase because she would not leave. And I'm like, lady. She like, oh, this is ridiculous. I've been shopping here for 30 years. I, I think she was Italian or something. I've been shopping here for 30 years. This is ridiculous. Oh my God. This is, oh, get your manager. Get your manager. The manager come. She explains everything. I'm like, okay. It don't matter if you've been shopping here since 1960. Where's your receipt? I can't process this without a receipt. You claim you've been shopping here for 30 years, but you don't know the policy been like that for 30 years? I was like, lady, hang it up. Hang it up, flat screen. So many customers where, like I said, the customers are cool. With some customers, you can have nice conversations with, y'all laugh, y'all joke, and they really brighten up your day. They brighten up your shift because it's a real nice communication. It's a real nice exchange between y'all. Then there's those customers that just come up, throw their clothes on the thing, and it's just, a, it's just business. It's just ring, 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 take off the hangers, take off the sensors. Okay, credit, debit, cash, bag them, go. Then there's those customers that they come up there with an attitude. You in the wrong. Eight times out of ten, they be in the wrong. They want to argue you down to the ground <laughs> about something that not eight times out of ten, they know they're in the wrong, but they trying to get over. Ugh, like, you coming in here with a fur coat, trying to get over on a return that you don't have a receipt for, stop playing with me. And I remember I had this other lady, and she was like, um, she tried to do something and I'm telling her, no, you can't do it like this. And she had the nerve to ask me, um, are you new? And I said, are you new? I've been here over a year, baby. <laughs> I used to hate those customers that you, they would come up to the register, right? I would greet them with good energy. And here's the thing, being in retail, especially the Gap, where I got to learn more facets of it, better than Old Navy, it let me know how much of a people's person I really was. Because I'm one of those people where I'm not the most outgoing, but I'm not the most shy. I'm somewhere in the middle, right? And when I interact with people in the public, you have no choice when you work retail. It lets me know how much of a people's person and how much I can be like, hi, huh, how you doing? Ah, and have a conversation with strangers. Because basically, you see 100 strangers a day working in retail. So basically, they come up to my register. I'm trying to give you a nice experience because this is your last this is your last step before you're out the door. So I'm like, hey, how you doing? Nah, nah. And then they come up and just throw the clothes on the thing. They too busy. They on their phone. I learned this working at Old Navy. Every customer is not going to be a pleasant one. You can feel their vibe and energy as soon as they come to you. As soon as you go to them and ask them a question or as soon as they come to your register, you can just feel the vibe from them and you can just tell, okay, how's this transaction going to go? Because I'm one of those people where I could be nice and I could be energized and I could be, you know, forefront and real like, huh, how you doing? Huh? But then... If I feel a nasty energy from you, I snap like this. And I could be real, scan, 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 credit debit, cash, okay, um, here's your receipt. Next, like, I could be real, like, one, two, three, next, next. I don't got time for that. So, looking at the Gap was a way better experience than Old Navy, but it still had its, you know, negatives with it. And it came to a point where, like, I was always on the register. I was always leaving late. And in that area, I had to catch a bus. And uh, sometimes I would miss the bus because I left so late. And it just became, like, and it was convenient, like I said, because 
it was close to my school, but it just came to a point where I was just like, it was like root, same thing over and over again. It was annoying. I was tired. I was always tired. I still had schoolwork to do. And you know how that, you know, you got to try to balance everything. And it was, I remember a couple of weeks before I finally left, one of the general managers. Oh, and that's another thing. Every four months, there was a new general manager. Like, that was the thing. It was not consistent. Like, it was like a revolving door. Every three months, I would come from school and it would, oh, here's Jack, here's Jill. They both fell down the hill. Like, it was a new manager, general manager every three months or a new other manager every, th I'm like, wait, such and such left? Oh, such and such left? Oh, yeah, they left last week. Oh, yeah, their last day was Tuesday. I'm just like, it was just too, and then... I remember one of the general managers had came to me one night, we was closing, and she was like, oh, how would you like to be one of the people that count money? Like, basically, like, I close the registers, I the one that count the money, I put it in the safe and all that stuff, and that's, that's make, that means I would have to have stayed, and that would have meant I would have had to have stayed even longer than I already was. And it got to the point where I was just getting tired of it, so eventually, I started looking for another job on the side, and before I knew it, I got it. And it was just, it's been real. My time is up. Working at the Gap wasn't the best experience, but it wasn't the worst experience. It was way better than working at Old Navy. I got to really learn aspects of the business. I got to really feel like I was learning something. I wasn't stuck. I wasn't stagnant. You know, eventually it had its cons too, but as I explained, but it was still a learning experience and I could still use that experience in my further career, you know what I'm saying? With whatever job I get. And I met some really cool down to earth people. One of them, who I even still talk to her to this day, she knows who she is. So that was just my take on it. What is, anybody in retail, what is your experience working in retail? If you ever worked at the Gap or the Gap Inc. stores, Banana, Old Navy, Gap itself, Gap Factory, what is your experience working at the Gap? And if you never worked in retail, you never worked at The Gap, what is your experience shopping at The Gap? Let me know down below in the comments. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video.